How y'all doing? Nick Bringle here. And today I want to talk about lighting, using a single light to uh, illuminate your YouTube videos, your talking head nonsense, whatever it is that you're blabbing about. I want to talk about how to light that using a single light and a few accessories and then a few other more advanced scenarios. So uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it. So for this video, I went ahead and also set up my iPhone mini, iPhone 13, whatever the heck it is, over there, just the super wide camera. I don't even know what the hell it's doing, but I'm sure it's fine. So you can see everything. I'll cut to it occasionally, so you can kind of see the setup and what is going on. This initial, uh, the light, the main key light that we're using today is the Godox VL150. It's been my go-to for a while now. I don't remember when I got it, but it's been a while. Highly recommend it for that, I think that three, $400 range, comparable with the Aperture series. It's basically the same thing, the CRI. Uh, you can't really tell the difference, and if you know what you're doing, you'll be fine anyway. So we're using the VL150. It's powered by a V-mount uh, battery. And then right here, right out of frame, is the Aperture uh, Lantern. And I have, it comes with this material uh, so you can kind of block parts out and, you know, really shape the light how you want. And I'll show you later how ridiculous this thing can actually be. But right now, I have most of the circumference of it, the sides everywhere around it uh, blacked out. And then I have another layer of diffusion directly over top and it's about a foot away from my face. We are at 15% power. So this gives you an idea. This is, and I have my monitor right down here that I'll be looking at. This is just one light, nothing else. Of course, the only other thing uh, that we have in the back is the computer and the iPad, and that's just to give you an idea of what if I have no other lights? What if this is the only light that I have and I have to work with what other you know light fixtures that I want to use? And in my case, I don't want to really put a lamp or anything back there. I don't actually own anything that would make sense behind me that wouldn't look odd or out of place. So this is just the one key light. Um, what time is it? It's The sun is definitely going down. We're close to sunset, so it is pretty dark in here, which I think is a good measurement for using these different lights. But this is a super easy setup. It looks good, it's flattering. Um, I'm gonna adjust this a couple different ways to give you an idea of, you know, what you can possibly do using this lantern. I think, you know, the, the mini box and, you know, the aperture, uh, mi the dome, the mini dome and the bigger one, I think are phenomenal uh, for very specific directional lighting, especially with the grid and the honeycomb, everything that fits in those. But with this, you're just getting this big um, source, this big light source. And the more diffusion you put on it, um, just the softer it becomes. At 15%, we're not even scratching the surface of what it is capable of. So um, yeah, and then before I start moving this light around, I wanna mention a couple of other items here. The uh, Pavo tube, this 6C, the little guy. Later on, I'm gonna use this as a key light, just this little light right here, just to show you that what a $100 LED tube can do. And then just for fun, we'll do the same thing with this old aperture. Uh, what is this? The ALMX. And this is pretty heavy duty light that I don't really use that often. And speaking of things that I don't use often, I want to do a giveaway. I have had these for like a year now and I don't use them ever. Um, it is Freewell's variable ND mist combo everything. Inside here is the variable ND on its own with the with the click uh, click stops from two stops to five stops and then separately also 72 millimeter thread is the variable ND mist combo with the magnetic feature that you can swap stuff out and that's two stops all the way up to nine stops of ND. So um, I want to give this away. I've never really used it. It's in this really nice case um, and they're all inside in here. So uh, comment down below with 
uh, whatever you want, but include 72 millimeter. And that will enter you in for a chance to do this and I'll give it away in a week or so. I'll keep you updated on a community post or something. Sorry, I had to cut in just for a second to promote and to thank Motion VFX for sponsoring today's video. Uh, they have supplied me and so many people out there with amazing plug-in templates and titles, transitions, different types of effects for Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere, and it's really, really high quality stuff. I personally never really use a lot of tools like that in my videos unless it's client work, but I think I'm gonna start, you know, experimenting it, uh, experimenting with it in uh, some of my YouTube videos, as you're uh, seeing in today's video and some of my most recent um, publications here on YouTube. So uh, yeah, back to the video, back to the content, and um, motion VFX. Okay, so now this is a very different setup, but all I've really done is move this giant lantern from that 45 degree-ish angle over here to directly over my head. Now, maybe not directly, I'm not so much going back here at all, I'm keeping most of it in front of my face, and so this is giving you that classic godfather look, that old school restaurant, you know, that really dim, um, harsh line kind of shadows and things like that, but it might not actually be doing that with this setup because it's so soft. So um, yeah, this is another option. You just put a light right over top, especially this lantern. It's so versatile um, as we keep mentioning. So this is just a couple of layers of diffusion and still at 15% power. And this is what we're getting. So here's an example of bad lighting when using good equipment. Okay, so I have turned this lantern, just blasting it into the wall in front of me at 100%. We're still at F3.2, somewhere in there. And as you can see, it looks awful because there's just, there's nothing leading your eyes anywhere. It's all just kind of blended in together. It doesn't look great. Um, it just, this kind of shows you how different the light can react when just putting it at different places. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna swing this light around just to give you an idea of what the difference is of blasting it at a wall in front of me and maybe blasting it up in this corner and just giving you an idea of experimentation and playing around with different types of lighting. That's, you know. So now we've swung the light, it's blasting behind me to the right over there into the corner and still not ideal but it does give a little bit of a different look and feel, a little more dramatic, and um, you know, it's given me a little bit of a hair light and a little bit of fall off on this side. So it's usable, and depending on the situation, it could be ideal, but this is just you know blasting 100% of the VL150 into the wall and seeing what happens. Okay, this is the last one we'll go through with just a single light, and uh, this one is, probably obvious and it is directly in front of the camera right here and it's just straight on. So instead of having that angle and having that typical fall off and trying to create those triangles and you know softer shadows, this is just right into my face. We're at 18% power. So similar to 15, 18%, not a huge difference, but it's a little bit further away from my face and this is what you get. So let's take a look here. It's okay, it's not great, but um, yeah, that's, that's that. Now let's see what else we could do. Okay, so we're back to where we started. One light, uh, the VL150 in the lantern, double diffused basically, and that 45-ish degree angle off to the side. So this is, in my mind, the easiest and most flattering way to do it if you only have one light. And uh, yeah, what I'd like to show you is, what if you have no lights? What if you just have a lamp in the room and it's not the ideal color temperature that you want, but you just, you wanna go for it and make it work. Let's check that out. So this is a bit of an extreme example, although if you're shooting a short film, any kind of film at all, or you want a very dramatic, um, realistic look, 
then this would be your option. I have one lamp on over here. It's 3200 Kelvin and that's it. We're still at the same, uh, I think, F3.2. That's it. This is the only light that is on, but obviously, typically, most of the time, traditionally, historically, you will not do this with a YouTube video because some people aren't a big fan of that. They want to see lights, they want to see your face, and you know, you're probably trying to communicate some sort of information. Um, so it's really up to you, whatever you want to do, what your audience enjoys. And so let's go back to uh, the original setup. Let, let's do that now. Okay, so now we're gonna show you how far we can go. We've been using a single light. Now we're gonna add a bunch of lights and just see how extreme it can get. And then we'll end it with these single, you know, just for fun, kind of, a, just to give you examples of what's going on. Okay, so now we have multiple practicals and little LEDs behind us. We have um, kind of a hair light, just a through light. I have a light on the ground back here. You will see it all in the other shot, no doubt about it. But this would be um, my typical setup now, would be to do this and really kind of creating layers and more depth in the shot. And you've heard all these things before, but we do have to get um, you know, creative in the spaces that we have. Like I talked in a previous video, um, and you can see it here, the camera is on my bed. It is not level, so I will, you know, have to correct this as best I can in post, uh, unless I had a big piece of wood or a board or something. I'm sure there's a way I could do it but I'm trying to do it as quickly as I can and um, make it seem as natural as possible and that this is something any of us can do. So um, yeah, so all of this lighting, this is pretty typical for what I've been doing in uh, most of my videos. That was something that fell. You might see it on that cam. You might not, who knows. Um, but this is my ideal setup. It takes me probably about an hour or so to get everything in the right position. I typically will take everything to the computer. I'll do a few test shots and um, you know some minor color grading and just kind of see exactly what I would like for everything to look. And when it's nighttime and there's no sun change coming in and out with clouds or anything like that, it makes it a lot easier. So if you can film at night and you're only using one light um, or I guess it doesn't matter what you're doing, but if you need more control because you have windows, you don't have a basement or somewhere that's blacked out, um, there are ways to go about that. You can get cinefoil, um, you can use sheets, you can do all kinds of stuff, but um, definitely take your time. As much as audio is very important to video and clearly the visual, you know, the camera, creates some sort of importance, but the lighting is just as important as the audio because audio, of course, you know, people are hearing stuff. It needs to be as crisp as it can be, but then the lighting, if it's done not in a good way um, and it's not flattering and it doesn't make you pop or give that depth and make it look like you're on a set, um, it can, you know, your retention time can go away and people could click off or anything like that. So just experiment with your space, take some time and find that perfect groove of where you'll remember the setup and it's something you can slightly adjust over time. Uh, you don't have to rush it because um, I change things all the time as you have seen. So um, yeah, I've blabbed on enough. So, um, oh, we need to go to these. So we're gonna, we're gonna, hook these up and we'll come right back and then we'll we'll end the we'll end the video there i guess i don't yeah that's what we'll do uh yeah 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 okay so i'm not even gonna bother to get this light out of frame i just i want you to see it so here is the pavo tube it's on 15 percent power and it's about a foot away from my face no diffusion just what's built into the light and it is it feels a bit harsh no doubt about it i've left 
all of my other practicals and helpers behind me on. So it definitely still gives you something. And honestly, like seeing this just on the monitor, it looks pretty cool. So this might come across as a win uh, on the editing floor and it might look like something like you could just use this little tube light sometimes if you want. So um, it's definitely more dramatic and harsh, but sometimes that's what you're going for. You're talking about something sad and gripping and dramatic or scary or frightening. Um, but you can do so many things with this. I just have it on this little small rig arm, but I mean, just even adjusting it, you know, a little bit like that. And maybe, you know, let's say you had it a little bit up out of frame. Of course, we do not have it that way, but let's just say you did that, you know, this gives a whole nother look and feel. So you can really move this thing around and, and really, I don't know, you can have fun. I'm having fun right now. Um, yeah. So let's switch to the other one. The, uh, the hell is this thing? The ALMX, and let's see what that thing can do. Let's see. Now this light does have diffusion on it. It has a couple of layers. It's like a magnet that you can put on. Now this is kind of warm, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's pretty hot. I I think I think that's even hotter. We need to turn that down. Whoa. Okay, so this is in a similar place that. The Pavo tube was, and of course it's a much smaller light, um, but it is a workhorse. It's built really, really well. It's under a hundred bucks and it comes with these little magnetic pieces of diffusion that see when you take it off, you see the harshness. I add it on, add on the next layer, and there we go. So again, you could get away with this. You could make this work, no doubt about it. Um, I, I think this is kind of, it's even kind of educating me on the layering uh, of, of lights, that we have a light here and it's showing you me how I want you to see it. And then behind me is another layer with the bigger NAN light with the barn doors, Pavo tube, and that's kind of going in between me and the wall. And then back there we have the computer, the iPad, and a few other lights. So there's multiple layers to this scene in this room, and that's definitely just creating a much more dramatic and appealing look, um, at least I hope so. And this can be translated into any kind of scene. It doesn't have to be talking head YouTube. It can be anything you want, really, um, if, if that's the look you're going for, so yeah. Okay, so I think we covered just about everything that I wanted to. This was a longer video. Um, Definitely appreciate you stopping by. Remember to hit subscribe, hit the like button, drop a comment down below. 72 millimeter Freewell, entire kit of mist and variable NDs in this nice protective case. Could be yours, could be mine. I could just keep it, but I'm not. I wanna give it back, I wanna give it to you guys. I don't use it um, at all. Maybe one time when I, I don't even remember, so. Anyway, go create something and um, yeah, let me know down below what you thought of this ridiculously long video on lighting.